Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Trace Forsyth. I'm one of the speakers for this afternoon's session. I'm a high school math teacher at Horton High School in the Annapolis Valley. I'm joined by Chris um, Atkinson, uh, who's also a high school math teacher in Sacred Heart School in Stittsville, a suburb of Ottawa. Chris, do you want to say hello? Hello, everyone. Uh, Chris is also a brilliant coder for Texas Instruments. Uh, Tom is here from Texas Instruments Canada. Tom is the one that is providing the software for you to use in your classroom. And so thanks for that, Tom. Tom, do you want to say hello? Hello from Ottawa. <laughs> um, uh, in the chat, uh, Tom and I have added a link to a website that uh, he developed for this session that includes a whole host of resources including but not limited to the activity instructions for the TICE graphing activity I'm going to do with you today, uh, the TNS file that Chris developed for you for our session, uh, a curriculum document um, that or a document that shows how the TI activities have been matched to the curriculum in Nova Scotia, um, and then a link to the software that you can you can download. Um, there's also documents on the workshop loan, and all of this Tom is going to talk about at the end of our session. Our presentation is this afternoon is in two parts. First, we're going to use the TICE to produce graphs using the piecewise function on the calculator. Um, in part two, Chris is going to show you a program he created on the TI Inspire CAS using Python which does the same thing, only easier and faster. Um, and the, the nicest thing about that I find about Chris's program is that there's no limits to the number of lines that you can draw, vertical or otherwise. When I did a quick run through the curriculum guides, I found a number of places where um, we see graphing in, from P to 12. So in grade seven, they learn to plot points. Now, sometimes this is done earlier and sometimes later, but they, uh, but they, there's an outcome for plotting points. Um, in grade nine, students are asked to graph linear relations, usually ones that are given. And in, it isn't until math 10 that we actually teach them how to find the equation for the line and, and, to, uh, and to do the restrictions of the domain and range. The, actual, the word piecewise isn't formally introduced to students until pre-Cal 11, but students have the skill, in my mind, to understand this in relation to the graphing of equations. And I will tell you, I talk very fast, and so if I need to get slowed down, you can, you can let me know uh, through the chat. Um, so I love to graph. Uh, the first day back from summer, uh, vacation, I have my students graph a set of coordinate pairs so that when they join together, they make the faces of Phineas and Ferb. Rarely, of course, do they get that joke anymore. <laughs> but when I was thinking about this session, I was asked this year by a student how she could graph um, a, a restricted domain on, on her calculator. Now, her calculator had the older version of the operating system. So I showed her the following. I'm just going to stop sharing this one and share my, my calculator. Can you see that OK? Yes? Yep. OK. So say I want to graph the function y is equal to x plus 8, but I want to restrict it to negative 1 to 2. So if I go into my calculator, I can go to the y is equal to, and one of the ways you could do it is if you grab the fraction button on the numerator, you can add your, your um, function, y is equal to x plus 8, and in the denominator, you're going to put the restrictions. So when you do it like this, you have to put the left-hand restriction and the right-hand restriction in. So I would put negative 1, and then I want to put less than or equal to, so 6, x. And then I have to add the word and. 
Well, and is found under the math logic. And then I would put x is less than, second function math, less than. So when I graph this equation, I get the line that goes from just one to two. So if I change my window so I can see that, you can see that it stops at two. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing that and go back. Mm -hmm. So the older version of the operating system did not allow you to put both restrictions in using the negative one less than or equal to x less than two. You had to use the word and. And so if you wanted to graph multiple graphs, you could either use all 10 lines in the y is equal to uh, f screen, or you could add equations together using multiplication and division. So when you do that, you have your equation and, and multiplied by the restrictions to that equation. So if I have x plus 8 was just less than 1, I get the blue line. And then I could add a second equation. So x squared with the, with the restrictions of negative 1 to 2, and then add a third equation. So you could add, keep adding these all together, which is really cumbersome. Uh, to do. So with the new operating system, the piecewise function allows you to graph up to 50 lines with ease. And that's what I'm going to do to you today, for, with you today. So when I was preparing for today, I simply went to the internet and searched for a picture. And then I uh, graphed it on grid paper, found the equation of the line, and then started putting it into my calculator. There are lots of ways I could have done this, depending on what skill level I wanted my students to attain or, or use. But I figured for us, we all can graph pretty easily and and uh, and quickly. So find equations. So today we're going to gra gra draw a fish. Okay. So I'm going to share my calculator. And if you don't have your calculator handy, you uh, all these instructions are on the website that Tom is going to go over. So my fish that I created, because I wanted something quicker, has eight lines. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to start in the new operating system. It has a function called piecewise. So I press math and scroll up to piecewise. And you can do up to five lines. The default is three. So I'm going to do three, three, and two. So in your first equation, your first set, I'm going to put all the equations in. So y is equal to x plus 2, or sorry, x plus 4. The next one is y is equal to 3. The third one is y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. And if I want to, put, what, now I want to put in the restriction. So I go over, scroll over and up. My first restriction is from negative 3 to negative 1. So I do negative 3, second function math 6, x, second function math 6, and uh, negative 1. So I'll continue to make the, put the restrictions in for my other two equations. The next one is negative 1 to 1. And the third one is from 1 to 2. So if I were to graph that now, I should see three lines of my fish. So let's go back in and do the other two, the, other, the next three lines. So I click math, I click piecewise, I want another three lines, and so I'm going to put them in. The first one is y is equal to negative 1, the second one is y is equal to negative 0.5x plus 2. Oh, sorry. 
I'm in the long, long, wrong, long. Sorry. Um, there. Go back up to my piecewise function. I must have pressed down too much. Negative 0 0.5. Oops. X plus 2. And my third equation is negative X minus 2. So I can go over and do my restrictions. So negative 1 to 1. Second function of math x. 6x. <coughs> Excuse me. My second set of restrictions from 2 to 4. And my third set of restrictions from negative 3 to negative 1. So now when I press graph, I should have six lines of my fish. So let's do the last two lines and see what it looks like. So remember, when we do piecewise functions, the default is three. So I have to change it to two. And so my last two equations are y is equal to x minus 1 and y is equal to 2x minus 3. And then I'll put in my restrictions, so 2 to 4 for the first one. And then 1 to 2 for the last one. So now let's graph it. And you can see that the fish is missing this vertical line that f forms the tail. So in order to do that, we have to go into this, into the list and put the numbers in. So it's missing a vertical line at four from zero to three. And I have to turn on my stat plot. So there's my fish. I can also, um, in the handout, I said you could optionally draw an eye depending on uh, what you wanted to teach the students. So if I uh, wanted to draw an eye, I worked out the circle of where it should be on the graph, but that's kind of a nice exercise for the students. So I found the equation um, as x plus 1 all squared plus 0 0.1 and then 1 but we know oops sorry plus 1 but we know that when we take the square root of something we have to take that plus and the negative version so to get the bottom half of the i I go down to y5 and I can get put in the negative so it's exactly the same as y4 but it's just the negative Zero point one, and then I go out of the square root and I put plus one. So now we have the full I. Now when I was doing this with my son, he said the I should be the same color. So I said, well, you can make it the same color, the top and the bottom half. I can make the eyes both green if I scroll over. And now I can draw my fish with a green eye. And you can change the color of all of them. So if I, I graph them before and I store them in my calculator, so I can make my fish blue, all blue, a blue fish.
So the nice thing about this store feature is you can program in your on your calculator, draw the graphs, and you can store them into it. What it doesn't do is it doesn't store the, the list. So if I wanted to call up my heart that I had drawn as your as the enrichment activity, I have to change my list for one of the vertical lines. And all this is in your handout. It's negative five. So now when I call up my heart. I'm going to turn on all my stat plots. Oh. Can't do it all at once. And then I can graph the enrichment activity that's on the handout. So all these equations are listed for you. Therese, did they uh, access the So when I was picking hand? out something to draw, I had to pick something that had only three as a maximum vertical lines. Because if you look at your stat plots, that's all you have the option for, um, which does limit the activities. So what I asked Chris, I'm going to stop sharing now. What I asked Chris to do is to um, is to write a, a piece of software using Python that would allow you to produce to graph lines and produce pictures, but ones that you could um, have an unlimited amount of of uh, lines. So. Chris, if you want to take over, I will stop sharing. Sure. Thanks, Tris. Okay, so uh, Python allows us to... I think you're still muted, Chris. Oh, sorry. There you go. Is that better? Yep. Okay. Python allows us to program... Uh, on, an, on the TI Inspire. So sorry, the other way. TI Inspire allows us to program in Python. So what I've done here is I've taken Therese's program, which is pretty neat, with the fish, and I've programmed it in Python. Are you guys able to hear Chris? It's very low, Chris. Yeah, I can't hear anything right now. I think we're hearing your keystrokes on your computer, but so somehow it's picking up the sound off of that, but not your voice. Thanks, Laurie. Yeah. Um, so we for sure kind of can't hear you, Chris. In case you're wondering, I think Chris is playing a video that perhaps is found on the um, website that we shared. So if you go to STEM supports, <laughs> Um, that should do it. Does it. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Awesome. Now Thanks. we can hear you. And Chris, right. do you, like that, the video you're showing right now, it's on, it's on the website too, eh? It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. So the idea here is that, um, 
the, the, the fish is programmed using turtle in Python. And not to be outdone, last night I added the, the eyeball addition. I don't know if Therese noticed that. I put my eyeball in there as well. So I had an eye on my fish as well. And I'm going to walk you through the, the program a little bit. So let me get rid of this. I'll give you a bit of background. So Turtle Graphics. Turtle Graphics has been around for a long time. And the idea of Turtle Graphics is that uh, the turtle moves with commands that are relative to its own position, such as move forward 10 spaces, turn left 90 degrees, and then it carries a pen as well. And the pen can be controlled by putting it down or picking it up to draw something. So using the Turtle Graphics system, we decided to um, write some Python code with a number of prompts. So a lot of the logic in the code here is uh, is the prompts to ask the user for the first input, the second input, the third input, and the fourth input. But I'll walk you through the code to, to show you what it does. So the first thing you'll notice with the TI Inspire, um, actually, I'll start you a new page. If I go home, I would go to New under Documents. And you can see I can add a Python program down here. When I click on New, I make my test file and click OK. And then I've got myself a Python environment. So I want to open my piecewise function. So the things that the, we do at the beginning here is we have these import statements. Python is a pretty lightweight programming language. It allows you to uh, import libraries as you need them in order to keep the, the, the program itself pretty lightweight. So only pull in the stuff you need in separate libraries. It's modular in that respect. So you'll see from the first line here, from the turtle module, I'm importing all the commands. And then I've got from the TI system module, I'm importing commands. And then from my functions, I'm importing commands. The my functions file is defined over here on page 1.3, where I've defined a draw line function and a draw circle function. And all these functions do is they accept some input and allow me to do things with that input. You'll see here the draw line function accepts t, which is the turtle. So I'm going to pass the turtle to the draw line function. A starting value for x, a starting value for y, so a coordinate where to start and then an ending value for x and y. So the turtle will pick up its pen, go to the starting x, y coordinate, drop his pen down, and then go to the ending x, y coordinate, and then pick his pen up. And as it goes between those two points, it draws a line, obviously. And the same thing happens for the draw circle command down here. We've got t.pen up. So you pick the pen up, you go to the, the center of the circle, and then you draw the circle at radius r, and then you pick your pen up. So these two functions allow me to call those functions from my main program and draw a, a line or a circle based on those, those parameters. So let me come back to the, the code and show you what the code does. So the first, I have a few variables for things that I'm going to use over and over again. I didn't want to type the same thing over and over again. So the first is a, a vertical line prompt. Do you have a vertical line to input? More lines prompt. Do you have another line to input? The circle prompt, do you have any circles to construct? Uh, more circles prompt, do you have another circle to construct? The input error prompt, so when I'm receiving input from the user, if there's an error, um, I'm asking them yes or no. Uh, and they, if they input anything but yes or no, this error prompt says a, a Y for yes or an N for no will suffice. And then a verify prompt. The, the verify prompt is, should I add this to the sketch? It's in case you make an error in input, um, it allows you to not input that into the program and blow up the whole program uh, mid midway. Let me take you through some of the, the logic. So you start off the program by printing, we'll start with our non-vertical lines. So it prompts the user to say, we're well, starting with non-vertical lines. I create an empty list for my lines and I create an empty list for my circles. I clear my more variable and the more variable checks to see if there's more to add. If it's not equal to no, so if it's yes, then I want to pick up the slope, the y-intercept, the minimum x value, and the max x value. I'm going to use these parameters to, um, to create a print statement that outputs it in a y equals mx plus b format with a pipe 
or a restriction bar that specifies the restriction. So it's min x less than x less than max x. And then it prompts me, do you want to add this equation to the list of lines to be graphed by the turtle? I have the option to say yes or no. Oops. Sorry, hopping around with my mouse here. I'm going to use my keyboard instead. I have the option to say yes or no. Um, if the verified is yes, then it's just going to add the um, to the piece list. That's my list of lines. It's going to add the x value, the minimum x value, the maximum x value, the slope, and the y-intercept. That information will be added to my piece list. And then I'll, later on, I'll just go and, pr and print, uh, print through the, that list. And then it'll ask me, do I want to input more? That's just some of the logic to say, yeah, I want to input more, or no, I don't want to input more. And if I get if I put something other than yes or no, it says my input error prompt saying just yes or no is, is enough, and then it will um, prompt me for the same answer again. All right. So if you if you say no, you don't have every, you don't have any more non-vertical lines to input, then it'll ask about your vertical lines. It says okay, let's take care of your vertical lines then. And it's the same logic as it was for the ver the non-vertical lines. Only this time it's asking for your x value, and then what your minimum and maximum y value are. So what values are you going between along your x-axis, or along your y-axis, rather? It'll print the prompt, so x is equal to whatever you said your x value was, with the restriction of the y value being between this minimum value and the, the maximum value. And it'll ask the verification prompt, are you sure uh, you want to add this to the list? If you do want to add it to the list, it adds that line to the um, to the list of lines to draw by adding the minimum x value and the maximum x value. Sorry, the, the x value gets added twice because that's the, um, the place it's going to start from and end. And then you're going to the x, the um, maximum y and the minimum y. So you're drawing between those two x, the two y values. And then finally, we take care of our circles once you're done inputting your vertical lines. So my vertical or my circles simply accept an x and y coordinate for the center of the circles and the radius. It prompts you to see if that's all you had to add. It does the verification. If it is all you have to add, then add to the list of circles the x value, y value, and radius. Then we'll prompt you for more. If you want more circles, um, I put a little challenge in here. If you do end up using this file, you can get fancy by adding color options. What line colors do you want to add? You can do that as well. And then so here's, we have, yeah. We have, uh, so Lori's are, I think, kind of one, of one of the, she's new to coding. And I just kind of indicated in the chat, she doesn't really have to code this. You're kind of explaining kind of what the code does, right? Yeah. How it's similar to what Therese had done with the fish in the 84 world. Um, but uh, it might be kind of good at the end to just like, how can, how can they do, how can they use it at the end? What, what steps do they have to go through? For sure. I think that might be useful. Yep. I will for sure. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for monitoring the chat for me. Okay. And then, uh, we have this, uh, this is the defining piece here. So T is the turtle. I'm going to hide the scale, set the grid to 10 and hide the turtle. So I don't want to see the turtle drawing it. Uh, so then here is the list of, so for I in range, length of my piece list. So essentially for each piece, for each line in the, the line list, I want to draw the line using the variables that I stored in the piece list. And then for each of the circles in the circle list, I want to draw a circle. This is These are the two functions that I defined over on the other page. Uh, using the circle parameters, the, the x val value, the y value of the center, and then the radius. And I'm going to pass the turtle over as well. OK, so in order to run this, this program, if you download this program straight off the STEM Supports website, there's a TNS file there for you. If you download that file, open it up in the TI Inspire software, you'll be looking at this page right here, looking just like this. If I press Control-R or Command-R on, on a Mac, It'll, you'll get prompted. This is how you can use it. It says, we'll start with your non-vertical lines. What's your slope? I'm going to do the first three lines exactly how Therese did 
uh, on her fish, like the top three lines. So what's the, the slope? It's an x plus 4. So I'm going to say the slope is 1. The y-intercept is a 4. The minimum x value, so I'm looking at the restrictions now, went from negative 3 to neg negative 1 as my max x value. And then it's going to uh, present it to me as an equation, right? x plus 4 with a restriction of negative 3 to negative 1 based on the input that I put in here. Do I want to add this to a sketch? If I made a mistake or if I uh, forgot to put a parameter in, I can say no and it won't add it to the list. But I do like that one. I'm going to say yes, I like that one. And then it says, do I have another line to construct? And I do have another line, yeah. I say yes. What's my next line? My next line is y equals 3. So my slope on that one is 0. The y-intercept is 3. The minimum x value, I'm looking at the restrictions now, go from negative 1 to positive 1. And it asks me, is y equals 0x plus 3 from negative 1 to positive 1? Do I want to add this to the sketch? Yeah, I do want to add that to the sketch. And I do have another line to add. So it's my final slope. Negative 2. Y-intercept is positive 5. Restrictions go from positive 1 to positive 2. If you want to add this to the sketch, that looks correct. Do I have another line to construct? This is my non-vertical lines. I'm going to say, no, I don't. Next, we'll take care of our vertical lines. Do I have any vertical lines? Well, I'm just doing those first three lines, so I'm going to say no for now. Do I have any circles to construct? Um, sure, let's add the eyeball just because that was fun to make yesterday. So let's do that one. So the x the coordinate to the center was negative 1. The y coordinate to the center was positive 1. And the radius, let's say, was 0.2. So does that look correct for my circle? Yes, that looks correct. Let's add it. And do I have another circle? No, I don't. So it's going to draw my three lines just as it did for Therese. And then there's my little eyeball for the circle. OK. Now, I also did the heart. And to save you all the input lines, uh, the, the extension activity, using the same uh, process that Therese did, we went through all of the, the lines. And you can see that turtle draws the heart just as well. And there's no restriction on the number of lines you can put in or the number of vertical lines or horizontal lines. It's just you keep adding until you're done. And it just keeps repeat running through them until it's done. But yours doesn't ask what color you want, does it, Chris? That's that's what I was saying in the, the extension code there, Tom. If you want to hack around with the code, <laughs> okay. I have a, a little prompt in there that says, if I go back to 1.1, the, pr the prompt yesterday said, add uh, an eyeball uh -huh. circles. But uh, the challenge here is modify your code to get fancy with color options. So you can set the color for the lines nice. if you want to. Thank you very much. And 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 Chris is right. Like that, when I was thinking of a picture to draw, I had to limit it to three vertical lines because that's what my TI eighty four did. And uh, and with his, it's it's limitless. Thank you, Chris. Um, so just to uh, the next part of our presentation is. Um, is Tom. Um, Tom is going to talk to you about the TI loan program. And I love this program, as he knows. Um, it's like brutally easy to do. If I wanted, I borrowed Rovers and Inspire cast calculators for my students in January. And um, all I did was send him an email, say this is what I want to do. And he arranges it all. It gets sent to the school. And when I'm done uh, using them, and when you open up the containers, there's a little paper in there for FedEx. They just slide in and call FedEx, and they take it back and send it back to Tom. So it's it's worthwhile, especially if your school doesn't have the funds that can buy class sets of these materials. But anyway, so Tom, you can talk about the website and the software, et cetera. Okay. I mean, just to reference what Therese did, her school has – predominantly T84 plus CEs. Is that right, Therese? Yeah. yeah. And Therese was interested in some of the, so she didn't have the TI Inspire handhelds and she was interested in coding in Python, didn't have the money to have, like to go order a class set of these things. 
And she was also interested in some of the stuff we were doing with the little robotic car, the TI Rover. Um, so not only did we kind of ship out the stuff to her, park it there for a while kind of thing, but we had a lot of fun um, co-planning and co-delivering remotely a lesson with her grade 11 class, wasn't it, Therese? Yeah. It was just a, it was an amazing yep. experience. So it's not just like, we'll ship stuff, like we'll, we'll help you. So if you're new to TI Inspire, if you're new to coding, if you're new to Python, if you're interested in any of this stuff, um, we'd love to kind of work with you. So Chris, can you copy from the website? So actually, actually you guys can, can maybe go to the website if you'd like. Um, I'll just stick the website URL in again. Um, this is where we have all the stuff kind of for, for the workshop today. But in there, one of the links is the what we call the workshop loan. And all you do is you fill out that little form or email or call me. My contact info is on that page too. Um, and say, hey, I'd like to play with or do this with my class or <coughs> for profession, professional development or whatever, whatever the case might be. And we'll ship out whatever it is that you need. Okay. Um, like there's some new, uh, a really exciting new thing is the TI-84 plus CE Python. So you can now code in Python on the TI-84 plus CE, but no one in Canada has those calculators yet. So come the fall, if that's something you want to play with, um, if I have access to those, I can ship those out to you. Um, what was the other thing, to So the, the Canada website. So if you go to um, education.ti.com forward slash Canada, um, Chris, maybe you can pop that in the... Uh, in the in the uh, link, um, then what you can what you can do there is access all sorts of things, um, including um, curriculum alignments. Um, so this is for for your Nova Scotia curriculum, and also for IB resources because I know that there's a lot of IB programs that run um, in Nova Scotia as well. Um, so I'll throw in three links here, four links actually. That uh, that are relevant for kind of what I'm what I'm talking about um, in the chat. We'll see how it looks. <laughs> so um, so there's IB pro uh, supports for both the TI84 plus CE and for the TI Inspire. There's curriculum alignments, meaning if you want for your grade 10 course to see um, you know what activities exist if you're using TI84s or TI Inspires. Um, there's hyperlinked activities to each of each of your uh, your outcomes, um, the workshop loan connections there, or email me. Um, and the Canada website, I mean, it's just a place you can peruse if you'd like just to see the kinds of stuff that we have there. Um, I did put earlier the links for both the TI Inspire software and for the, um, so the TI-84 plus CE software and the, the, TI, um, the TI Inspire CX2 software. I'm going to put those in again, just so you have those. So download those. Um, and if you would like a to be entered into a draw to win, your odds are pretty good. I think there's only two other people on here. So you have a 50% chance of winning. Um, it's a pretty, pretty good situation here. Um, then uh, you can, where is that draw? Chris, can you maybe I'll, I'll go to the Actually, on that page is the uh, the link for, for it's it's the 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 form is actually kind of on the the web page for the session, um, and included in there it asks a question: Are you interested in getting a perpetual license, so a free forever license for either or both of those pieces of software? I'll send it to you. Um, so please, please, please take advantage of these things. We 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 want to be supportive of the awesome stuff you guys are doing. Um, so have I missed anything to Therese? Was there anything else that you wanted me to touch on? No, I think that's good. I yeah. use my, uh, or my smart view software every day in the classroom, every day. And we just uh, finished doing workshops with a thousand kids across Canada using the software, the TI Inspire software, um, like STEM, STEM type workshops coding and all this stuff and it really is amazing so whether you're teaching virtually kind of or face to face the handhelds or the software um, it is really powerful yeah and i will i will if you go on the uh, ti website you can get start uh coding with the 10 minutes of code so uh, which is where i started 
So Lori, what are you excited to use this fall? Is it the more the 84 or the, the TI Inspire or the coding? I, I'm curious to know kind of what, uh, I'm not sure if you can unmute yourself or how, how things are structured here, but if you maybe throw in the chat or unmute yourself, it'd be interesting to hear. Um, is it the piecewise function part, the turtle stuff, the turtle graphics, the TI 84 stuff? Yeah, okay. And you yeah, can code cool. too, Lori. Lori is very, very brilliant too, um, and a wonderful math teacher. So, um, but yeah, do you have any questions for us? Chris or Therese, yeah. you got to you got to show them the videos that the of kids kind of the coding either the, the song or or that uh, the orchestra from I know it's not Nova Scotia but it's close enough so the Mount Allison group are you able to Therese go to the um, mm. or Chris if you want to share your screen and then maybe just play that I embedded it as a video on the on the web page. So Chris is on the web page that we created. And the first thing, Tetris is a, a kid coded a song. You can code music on this, which I think is a beautiful way to pull in so much mathematics um, with the TI, TI Innovator Hub. So Chris, this is a, a kid just randomly created this. Can you? I'm not hearing it. <laughs> Yeah, that, that kind of blew us away. Oops, and then the Mount Allison Shad Choir. That's that's something to behold. So these these are they played around with both the light. You can control lights on the TI Innovator Hub, and you can control sound. This was beautiful on so many levels because we've actually had some fireflies in Ottawa as my wife and I have been walking around the neighborhood and in the backyard lately. 
Um, but I mean, the title of this session is bringing math to life for all our students. And what was especially gratifying, like you really see how maybe math or coding isn't something that grabs the imagination of some of our kids, but you bring music and light and kind of doing something together. And all of a sudden, um, it, it's amazing the kind of the kind of stuff that kids can do. So even the art stuff, like that Therese is saying, like something as simple as draw a picture, it's very different than saying, let's graph some functions and do piecewise functions. Yeah. And, and too, that you, using Chris's program, you could use it at all different grade levels, right? Once, once you can show them how on the graph, how to restrict the, not, not using that word, but restricted and, uh, and it's limitless. Like the, the little program I sent you yesterday, Chris was, I think 70 lines and it's, and, it, and I could have kept going. So it's so wonderful. And there's lots of TNS files in that uh, curriculum support document that you were talking about that's on the website. So if you wanted to do something in math 10, for example, um, you could, you could look at the TNS file and bring it up on your software. So, um, and the problem solving that is involved when you're trying to do the challenges on Chris's programs. <laughs> so anyway, um, any questions for us? No? Well, thanks very much for coming. And, uh, and thanks boys for joining us from Ottawa. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me.